From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. Around $1.5 million in coins were tossed into Rome's Trevi Fountain last year. So this year for vacation, we're going to Rome. Me, the missus, and my pool vacuum. Even though they've had dinner earlier, the eight-year-old son and his four-year-old sister are hungry for McDonald's. So instead of waking up the parents, the boy seated his sister in the back of the father's work van, then got behind the wheel. He drove about a mile from his house, through four intersections and over railroad tracks. Witnesses reported that he obeyed traffic rules. He stopped at the red lights, adhered to the speed limit, did not sideswipe a single garbage can. And after reaching the drive through at the fast food restaurant, the boy paid for the cheeseburgers with money from his piggy bank. And yes, they did get to eat the food before police arrived. So, how did an eight-year-old learn how to drive so well? Well, he says he learned by watching YouTube. Uh, looks like that restricted mode on YouTube is suddenly going to get a lot stricter. Hey, you know what? Maybe next he'll be watching how-to videos on basic surgeries he can perform. Florida restaurant inspectors recently found 13 health code violations in the kitchen at President Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. Tiffany, Eric, Daddy gave you one job and you're doing a lousy job of cleaning up that kitchen. I, I can't do a, a Donald Trump impression. Sorry. A waitress at a popular Waikiki restaurant got a very big surprise during her shift recently. Kayla Shandara was waiting on a couple from Australia, and she says they hit it off. Well, when they left, Shandara says she was shocked to see the tip was $400, double the $200 bill for the dinner. But the generosity didn't stop there. The next day, the couple returned to the restaurant and offered to help pay off the student loans and debt, which totaled more than $10,000. Why am I wasting time in this job? I should be waiting tables again! Thursday, the U.S. military dropped the mother of all bombs on an ISIS tunnel complex in Afghanistan, causing more than $26 in damage. Kylie Jenner is getting her own spin-off show called The Life of Kylie, followed shortly thereafter by the moon turning to blood and the raining of frogs. In the wake of that video showing a passenger being forcibly removed, United Airlines has established new policies. Yeah, from now on, free complimentary pillows and headrests must be provided for the comfort of all passengers being dragged. Smithfield Foods, the world's largest pork producer, has established a separate bioscience unit to expand its role in supplying pig parts for medical uses, with the ultimate goal of selling pig organs for transplanting into humans. The, you know, this sounds good on the surface, but I don't know if I'm really for any technology that would turn eating bacon into cannibalism. British publication The Daily Mail has to pay Melania Trump $2.9 million to settle a lawsuit, which is perfect timing because it's just about time for her to buy a new pair of shoes anyway. And that should just about cover it. An Italian man was granted a divorce after claiming his wife was possessed by the devil. <laughs> Show me an ex that's not! The Sun newspaper is claiming that the Navy SEAL team that took out Osama bin Laden is in training to remove North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Uh, okay, well, A, I'm behind them doing this 100%, and B, a uh, big thanks to the Sun newspaper for screwing up the surprise arrival of the SEAL team and what otherwise would have been a great mission. Monks in England who make Buckfast tonic wine are under fire after the high alcohol content wine was cited as a cause of 6,500 incidents of antisocial and violent behavior. And obviously it's the fault of the monks because, well, because they chased down and forced all 6,500 of those people to drink their wine to excess and then sent them off with instructions to kill, maim, and destroy! What, no? Okay, well then how do you explain why they're getting blamed? Shia LaBeouf says he's going to live alone in a cabin in Finland for a month. All right, so what do we have to do to get you to stretch that to a millennium instead, Shia? Facebook is increasing their efforts on stopping fake news. They're even creating a fake news police force. <laughs> okay, I, I just made that up. Just when United Airlines didn't think things could get any worse, a scorpion had other ideas. 
One fell out of an overhead bin and stung a passenger during a United flight between Houston and Calgary. Richard Bell was on his way home from a two-week vacation in Mexico when the scorpion fell onto his head. After stinging Bell, the scorpion was crushed by another passenger and thrown in a toilet. It's unclear how the scorpion got onto the flight. Both the passenger and the scorpion were dragged off the airplane in a bloody pulp. Taiwan has banned the eating of dog and cat meat. In fact, the restrictions are so tough you're not even allowed to use the phrase, tastes like chicken. Hundreds of protesters flooded the Capitol lawn on Saturday, carrying signs demanding that President Trump release his tax returns. Rachel Maddow was nowhere to be found. Angelina Jolie just bought a $25 million Hollywood mansion. See, now that's, that's the tough part about a divorce. I mean, you have to start rebuilding your life from nothing. Just a week after a park in southwest China started providing free toilet paper for visitors, thieves stole a total of 1,500 rolls. Wait, wait a minute here. How can you say the toilet paper was stolen if you're giving it away for free? An atheist group is arguing that a University of Mississippi football coach should be banned from posting Bible verses and other faith-inspired content on social media. Coach Hugh Freeze often tweets out Bible verses and uplifting faith-filled content. The atheist organization Freedom From Religion issued a press statement saying that Freeze should not be allowed to post such content as an employee of the university. Oh, yeah, and he's posting these from his personal Twitter account not from an account attached to the school. Okay, now I'm fine if you don't want to believe in God, but what is with you angry atheists? Why are you so intolerant, offended, and antagonistic towards something that you don't even believe exists? You don't put up this kind of commotion for the tooth fairy, so why do it for God, who also, in your opinion, doesn't exist? If there's nothing after this life, what does it hurt if they choose to believe in God or tell others about Him? It's all for nothing anyway, so who cares? Here's something to keep in mind, though. If you're right that there is no God and the religious folks are wrong, well, they've lost absolutely nothing. However, if God does exist, then you lose everything. Just something to keep in mind while you go out picketing against the equivalent of magical unicorns, as you believe. Victoria Beckham has trademarked the name of her five-year-old daughter, Harper Seven Beckham. Now, she's not only growing up entitled, she's also now trademarked. The crime problem in Chicago continues, where 29 people were shot in less than 18 hours over the weekend. Yay, Chicago! We're number one! The Chick-fil-A in Folsom, California is asking that whoever stole their cow costume last week to please return it. Don't be chicken about returning it, they have no beef with you. Sylvester Stallone is suing Warner Brothers for allegedly cheating him out of profits from his 1993 movie Demolition Man. Y you know, I don't blame him. I mean, here we are 24 years later, and Sly is just barely making ends meet financially due to not being able to find a job. A Montana State University professor is suing Walmart for libel after he says an employee at the Bozeman store listed his occupation on a fishing license as a toilet cleaner. I, I got nothing for that. I just think it's hilarious. A three-year-old Missouri girl asked her parents for a poop-themed birthday party. Good news! You can give this girl crap gifts and she has no right to complain. Uber says its bookings doubled in 2016, but it still lost $2.8 billion. Uh, have you guys considered maybe taking an intro to economics class? Nevada has introduced syringe vending machines to fight the heroin crisis there. So, so you're, you're fighting heroin by giving people easier access to tools used to do heroin. Oh yeah, I don't see any problem with that plan. It took new Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch less than 15 minutes on his first day to start asking questions. But the other justices didn't mind and quickly told him how to find the restroom. An eight-month-old baby in India has doctors baffled because he's already 84 pounds. I've seen pictures of the kid. Has anybody questioned the Michelin Man? The Navy is banning e-cigarettes from ships and aircraft because of reports of exploding batteries. 
As a side note, all e-cigarettes now come with free Samsung Galaxy Note 7s. An engaged couple was forcibly re-accommodated from a United Airlines flight over the weekend on their way to their own wedding. Man, you gotta wonder why anybody is flying United at this point. I mean, it's kind of like you deserve what you get now because you should have known better. A Texas woman trying to retrieve something out of her toilet ended up getting her hand stuck. So stuck, in fact, that police had to remove the toilet and carry it and the woman to the backyard. Police then used a hammer to gently break apart the toilet. Man, some people just cannot let a dropped toothbrush get away. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer says President Trump won't be releasing his 2016 taxes because of an audit. When asked if Trump will ever release his taxes, Spicer said that he'd have to get back to the press corps – in about eight years. According to a new survey, 44 percent of flyers would rather take a longer, more expensive flight than fly United. <laughs> Heck, I'd rather take Amtrak. I'd even settle for Greyhound. A South Carolina family got an Easter visit this week from a nine-foot-long alligator that broke into their upstairs porch and then refused to leave. Even worse, the Easter Bunny never showed up. Uh-oh. A person aboard a Southwest Airlines plane was arrested after security staff found a loaded gun in his hand luggage. Oh yeah, and by the way, Eric was to be the plane's pilot. Incidentally, this is the second gun that has been found by Albany baggage screeners in four weeks. Now, now seeing as it has been proven that the TSA is only 5 percent effective, imagine how many guns are still getting through security. Have a nice flight! Kendall Jenner says she's not as girly as her Kardashian sisters. In her words, she says, I get that from my dad. I'll just uh, let that one sink in for a moment. The U.S. fleet President Trump supposedly sent to North Korea spent days sailing in the wrong direction. Well, hey, you know, it's a, it's a round world. The fleet would get there eventually. An Oregon man died peacefully after a friend falsely told him that President Trump had been impeached. Now, are you sure he died peacefully? I mean, maybe once he passed on, his spirit got really ticked off at being lied to in his final moments on Earth. He's going to torment his friend now until Trump leaves office. Watch your language in Louisiana! Deputies arrested Jared Dillon Smith after they say he yelled an F-bomb while sitting next to a 75-year-old woman and, quote, clearly disturbed her peace. He was arrested. In Louisiana, the penalty for disturbing the peace is up to 90 days in jail and a $100 fine. Yep. All of that for a single dropping of the F word. Now, If that's the case, I can only assume Louisiana doesn't allow cable TV or movie theaters. Over $43 million in American cash was found inside an apartment in Nigeria. And you are way late if you were thinking of a Nigerian prince joke. Starbucks unveiled the Unicorn Frappuccino this week a multicolored salute to something that we believe exists but have never seen. You know, like the president's tax returns. The Avondale Police Department in Arizona has shared photos from the swearing-in of its newest and most unusual officer, Iro, the drug-sniffing lizard. Uh, by the way, lizards don't actually have a better sense of smell than dogs, and this all started off last year as an April Fool's Day joke, but apparently they just couldn't let this little guy go, so now he's on the police force. Hey, I wonder if he can save them a bunch of money on car insurance for their police vehicles by switching them to Geico. Egyptian archaeologists have discovered eight mummies in a 3,500-year-old tomb near the ancient city of Luxor. Tom Cruise could not have wished for better timing. Scientists say they have discovered that salt doesn't make you thirsty, it makes you hungry. Finally, an explanation of why I always need some pretzels to go with my pretzels. A guy in China hid about $6,000 in the kitchen trash can before he and his wife went away on a business trip. When they returned, they forgot about the money and days later tossed away the garbage. And the money. 
you know, that, that's just too bad. I mean, that $6,000 could have come in handy for buying a wall safe or maybe opening a Christmas savings account. Jake Bowers of Ohio wanted to set a good example for his children, and it cost him $14,000. That's how much money he found on the side of the road as he drove his family to a park in Worthington, a Columbus suburb. Bowers says when he initially saw the blue felt bag on the roadside, he thought it might contain someone's laptop. Instead, it was filled with $100 bills. Bowers and his family drove straight to the Worthington police station, and the bag was returned to its owner. It wasn't too hard to find him. A wallet containing the owner's ID was inside the bag. It could have been worse. The guy could have kept his money in a kitchen trash can. IKEA is talking about launching a restaurant chain. When you order, you'll have to put the food together yourself. Bill O'Reilly's exit from the Fox News Channel became official on Wednesday. Replacing Bill will be reruns of SpongeBob SquarePants. Nine lives or not, your cat could help you live longer. People who've owned a feline are 40% less likely to die of a heart attack, perhaps due to the pet's anxiety-easing powers. But get this, another study says household felines are able to manipulate you at whim with an urgent-sounding high-pitched meow, which is actually a purr mixed with a high-pitched cry. While some owners think cats purr when they're happy, some cats make the purr cry when they want to be fed, and people find the mixed calls annoying and difficult to ignore. The embedding of a cry within a call that we normally associate with contentment is quite a subtle means of eliciting a response, explains Karen McComb of the University of Sussex. Solicitation purring is probably more acceptable to humans than overt meowing, which is more likely to get them ejected from the bedroom. We think cats learn to dramatically exaggerate this purr cry when it proves effective in generating a response from humans," she says. So, in other words, cats know people like the back of their paws. The new trendy drink? Clear coffee, so you aren't continually staining your teeth. Although at $3.50 a serving, I think I'll just use toothpaste instead. A Florida couple has set a record by going on their 200th carnival cruise. Uh, separately, I might add, which is the secret to their happy marriage. Netflix says it's true. Their subscribers have spent over 500 million hours watching Adam Sandler movies. I guess I can't be so prideful now about calling myself a Netflix user. North Korean men can choose from among 15 sanctioned hairdos, but they are not allowed to get the Kim Jong-un haircut. Really? They, that, geez, that, that's a problem? I mean, is there a big demand to look like that? The police chief of Sperry, Oklahoma, wrote himself a $300 speeding ticket. A citizen had complained about seeing him speeding. He admitted it, and so he's paying the fine. And then he had to write himself another ticket for disturbing the peace when he cursed himself for giving himself a ticket. Japan is trying to stop their death by overworking problem by placing a limit of 100 hours of overtime per month, which, if you are a YouTube creator, you know is still considered a normal work week. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already an official weirdo, be sure to leave a comment and say so. Hey, have you signed up for the Marler Sheet? It's free and it's the official newsletter of Marler House. Subscribers to the Marler Sheet are automatically entered in monthly prize drawings. Sign up for the Marler Sheet free today at MarlerHouse.com. For more weird news anytime, visit DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marler, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!